Hey everyone, thanks for being part of Life Spring family today. Here at Life Spring, we're striving to impact God's kingdom by, by changing lives. As part of that vision, we're working to complete the purchase of our campus here at 320 Fussell Road. That includes the current building that we're in, plus nine acres of land. That's to help us do ministry much better, to be able to expand. We're, we're trying to expand our online um, reach by giving a better product. And as all of you know, that comes with a cost. And we're asking as we go forth that you partner with us to help us do ministry in a better way. So if you will, partner with us weekly, monthly, however, no gifts too small, no gifts too large. If you will, we've made it real easy, giving you several uh, platforms to give, either Venmo, Cash App, or our online website, or there's a link in the comments right now that you can click on and, and help. So, so we want to thank you right now for your support to help build the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will, stand to your feet for just a moment. We want to honor our men and women that has went on before us and fought for our freedom in our country. And I am grateful and I am thankful that I didn't have nobody to tell me when I had to get up, how to go, and where to go, and that we have the freedom in America to be free. And that's because of the men and women that died defending this great nation that we live in. So somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And everybody said, amen. Y'all may be seated for a moment. We're going to be up and down all day, so get ready. Just get your up and downs on already, all right? Tonight, tonight, look at your neighbor and say, tonight. Tonight is men's meeting. Here at 6 o'clock, men, come, bring somebody. <laughs> and I had somebody, well, what about my youth, son? Bring them. They welcome. Amen? When? Tonight, 6 o'clock. Where? Here. We're going to eat physically and spiritually. I know Elder Steve and, and Jordan's got something big planned for us. And, and I don't know about you. I'm, I'm, I love it when all the men get together. Y'all ladies don't even have no clue what we talk about. Let me give you a hint. Jesus. <laughs> I remember a time you got all the men together and didn't talk about Jesus. We're talking about Jesus. Amen. This coming Wednesday night at 6 30, we're going to slide into summer. All the children, all our children, our youth, our, our children, even the babies, we're all, we got something planned for them. But we're going to start at 6 30 instead of 7. Service will start at 7 for us adults that don't want to play in the water. Come get wet in the Lord. Amen? Last but not least, this coming Sunday, this coming Sunday, I get the opportunity to get beside myself. Pentecost Sunday. <laughs> Some people are going, I don't know about this Pentecost stuff, Pastor. I didn't know we were Pentecostal. Everybody that's a believer should be a Pentecostal. Watch. Watch so we can clarify, not by denomination, but as a believer, we should all believe that Jesus died and rose, and guess what? He, he is seated at the right hand of the Father right now in intercession for us, and he sent the Holy Ghost to live in us so that Pentecost can happen in our life. And everybody said, amen and amen. So look at your neighbor and say, bring somebody. Bring somebody next Sunday and come ready. How many are ready today? You know, I was thinking this morning that, you know, the men and women that died ahead of us, 
so that we can have the freedom to choose to be in church or be on the lake. Because they died, we're able to grill hamburgers and hot dogs. You need ha- apple pie, right? Because they died, and they were willing to sacrifice their life. I don't know about you, but I lost several family members in the Vietnam War. I, I remember when Vietnam War ended. Pastor, you old as dirt. <laughs> Been around for a minute. You didn't have to decree so fast over there. <laughs> but the men in the, the the men that came back from Vietnam War and and how they were treated and 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 it, it was if you'd have been around it was it was really terrible how they were treated, just defending our freedoms and our country. But as I was meditating on that this morning, also how was Jesus treated that sacrificed his life? I said, how was Jesus still today, all these years later, these decades later, here we are today, how is he being treated? And he was the ultimate sacrifice that gave more than we could ever give. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. So if you come to receive today, I want you to hold your Bible up and say it with me. This is my Bible. This is God's Word. I believe it, and I choose to receive it. I'm not just a hearer, but therefore a doer. Now plant the Word. And everybody said, amen and amen. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Pastor, I thought you said that you didn't have nothing to preach today. Be ready in season and out of season. As long as I got a Bible, I got something to preach because the good news of the gospel is that he died and I don't have to. Mm. Come on, y'all. We're going to talk about dying today. Death. It's a subject that nobody really wants to talk about. Dying. Statistics, y'all know I love statistics. Statistics shows that one out of every one is going to die. But we don't want to talk about it. I know when I sit down with my family to say something about, well, when I die, I believe that we should be prepared. If you've not prepared for your death, shame on you. If you've got children, don't leave that burden to them. Take care of it. Man, they make payment plans for that. Let your family know what you want. So I'm amongst my family right now. I want to tell my family what I want. I don't want a tear shed in the house for my death. I want you on your feet with your hands in the air worshiping a, a holy God. Because you ain't bringing me back because I don't want to come back. <laughs> and everybody said, see, see we don't want to talk about death. Death is one of those subjects. All over the, and, and God forbid if I try to talk to my daughter about it. Daddy. Daddy, I don't want to hear that. Well, listen, if Jesus tarries, we all going to die. I mean, I'm believing for the rapture, y'all. I am. I'm, way, I'm, I'm praying one day I go to lay down and hear this trumpet. <laughs> hear one minute and go on the next. That's what I'm believing for. But if he tarries, we are all going to taste death on this side. And everybody said. So I got one thing I would like to say about that. Be ready. Be ready. How many of you know people that have not been ready? I ain't talking about having their funeral arrangements made. Or or were they ready with God? I said, were they ready with God? Come on. I got some good gospel news this morning. You don't really die. I said, you don't really die. 
You know, after, after the funeral and everybody goes to Aunt Bella's house and sits down and has a potluck over you, discuss who you were and all the memories and all that, you're more alive than you've ever been in your life. Everybody says, amen. See, this physical body dies, but our souls continues to live forever. This physical body may cease to function. But our soul will live in eternity somewhere. I am still a pastor and a preacher that believes that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. I, I believe that. I might be a little old-fashioned for the for the day. And some of you watching today, you may already turn me off because I'm, I'm talking about dying. But can I tell you a little something? I still believe in the in the in the resurrection of our Savior. That He died, so I, you. Uses, you ones can go to heaven when you die. I believe that. And somebody said amen. If you're in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, say I'm there. If you will, stand to, for the reading of the word this morning as we, as we continue. We're going to start right there in uh, verse 1. For we know that when this earthly tent, in other words, this body, we live in is taken down. In other words, that is when we die and leave this earthly body. We will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies, and everybody said, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing, for we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. There answer some questions right there, y'all. We just answered some questions. We can go home, right? We will not be spirits without bodies. And everybody said, in other words, we're not going to be a bunch of naked angels up in heaven playing a harp. Come on. Verse 4, while we live in these earthly bodies, we groan inside. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. So we're always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. Verse 8, yes, we are fully confident. And we would rather be away from these earthly bodies. From then, for then, we will be at home with the Lord. I, I love what the King James translation says. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And everybody said, uh, so, so what is our purpose? And, and, and so what do we do? He tells us in verse 9, he says, So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to make lots of money. Our goal is to be YouTube famous. Our goal is to record as many number one likes on Facebook as we can. Our goal is to build a bigger house with ship lap siding. Uh-oh, somebody. Our goal then is what? It is to please God. Somebody say pleasing. To please him. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. Father, we come before you today, and we just ask that no one be just a hearer of your word, but therefore a doer. Holy Spirit, we ask that you speak loudly, speak clearly. Father, for those that are here and those that are watching today, I ask that you impermeate their hearing today, that you get all the glory, and that you get the honor. Now anoint my lips to speak your words today. And Father, let me decrease so that you may increase. And we give you the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, I want you to high five your neighbor and tell your neighbor your life matters. 
Come on. Say it like you really mean it. Your life matters. Your life matters. Y'all may be seated in the presence of God this morning, and I'm going to ask the question, why are we talking about dying? Why on this day are we talking about dying, knowing that next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday? So why would you, would you come in with a, with a message, Pastor, that, of dying? Of all things dying. I don't know about you, but I have dealt with so much death in the last two years. I have had so many loved ones, friends, and co-workers, and, and those around me, and, and now I'm hearing so much suicide and, and this and that. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, it, it hurts my soul not to be able to confidently say they knew heaven is their home. So why are we talking about dying? Well, I'm going to sum it up in this. See, what you believe about etern uh, eternity determines how you live today. Come on. What you believe about eternity determines how you live today. See, if we just think that we're a forethought, thought that, that boom, something happened, and here we are, we're accidentally here, you know, and there is no God, there's no creator, there is no Jehovah God, there is no Elohim who created all things, we're just here. Then we're going to live a selfish life, self-centered, self-serving life. And we'll go through life thinking that that's all there is. Can I interject today a little something? You're going to live somewhere. Where that is is your choice. How can a loving God send people to hell? He don't send nobody to hell. People send themselves there. And everybody said, mm. so we're going to talk about three things that happens after death. Is that all right with y'all today? We got a lot of scripture today, so just go and get ready. Number one, our physical body dies. When it dies, and it's going to, how many had somebody to die that you love dearly and miss them every moment of every day? Amen. Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews 9, verse 27 says this, just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Studies show that one out of one will ultimately die. Come on. Have you ever thought about how you're going to die? I don't know about you, but my, my biggest fear of dying is, what, shark bite? Real simple. Stay away from the ocean. I don't know, though. They're finding them in fresh water now. But I watched Jaws when I was a little young, you know. And anyway. What happens is, is our soul separates from our physical body when we die. This temporal tent that we live in today, we call bodies, separates from our soul. And, and as I've always told y'all, we will take on a new body when we die. I don't know about y'all, I put my order in. Tall, slender, good looking. I mean, long arms. And the church said... Matthew, the 10th chapter, Jesus pins these words. He says in verse 28, Matthew 10, verse 28, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Come on. Remember when Lazarus died and... and they came to Jesus, and Lazarus had been dead for, for four year, uh, four days. What did the King James say? He stinketh. I mean, that's the most eloquent way you could say it. Somebody say he stinks. 
We got some stuff that we carry around living that stinks, right? We need to get rid of some stuff. John 11 and 25 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Somebody say never. Never, 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 never. We're, we're, like I said, you know, after, after the service is over and them put you in the ground and all that, most people think that's end. That's not. That, that's just the beginning. That's the beginning of life. That is the beginning of life. Come on. We're alive. Somebody say, we're alive. Look, look at your neighbor and say, I ain't never going to die. So, so, you know, do we have a clear vision that when we die, our soul lives on? Right? Paul tells us we get a new glorified body. So, some of us might want to put in that request today. But watch this. Luke chapter 23, Jesus between the two thieves on the cross. And both of them were guilty. You had a, one that decided, you know what, I'm going to believe in Christ. He says, remember me today when you reach your kingdom. Jesus says, because you believed, I will see you today in paradise. Verse 42, he says, then he said, just remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. And everybody said, let's don't believe what the preacher says. Let's just see what the Bible says. Can we, can we, can we just read the Bible? Because, see, we've gotten so old-fashioned now. We've gotten so smart with technology. And we live in a time that people are heaping upon themselves teachers with itching ears. I'm going to find somebody that's going to say what I want them to say. And if I'm going to, I find somebody that says what I want them to say, that's who I sit with. And in reality, we all have a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. I would rather do a home going than I had a wedding any day. Home goings are permanent, but do not ask me to do a funeral. What's the difference? Funeral, you don't know where they went. Ain't my judge, ain't my call. There's only one judge, and he's not Mark. See, Paul struggled with this right here in he talked to the church of Philippi in Philippians chapter 1, verse 20. He says, and I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ, whether I live or die. For to me, living means living for Christ. Dying is even better. But if I die, I can do more fruitful works. If I live, I can do more fruitful works. For Christ. So I really don't know which one is better. I'm torn between two desires. I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. But for your sakes, it is better that I continue to live. And everybody said, I, I don't know about you. Uh, I, how, many, how many is going to heaven when you die? Let me see a show of hands. Those on Facebook. Come on. How many of y'all ready to die right now to get there? Not many. I, I mean, I'm ready when the time comes. I ain't really just take me now, Lord. I, I still got work to do. Watch. We're going to even be a little selfish about it. There's things that I have not enjoyed yet that you promised. Come on. I still run across people that are lost today, God. 
I, I mean, I'm encountering people that, that, that believe that there is no God. My heart hurts for the lost. There's so many people out here that believe that God's last name is Damn. I love that one because I, I got a real good response to that. My God don't need a dam. When he gets tired of walking on the water, he just parts it. So I don't know who you serve, but not ain't the God I serve. Pastor, you up there cussing. I ain't cussing. You know what a dam is? That's where you block water. Watch. They don't realize they're damning themselves. They're blocking the, the water of the Holy Spirit in their life. Yawn. Come on. Whew. So number one, our physical body dies, right? Our soul separates from our body. And number three is the thing that we sure don't like to talk about in church nowadays. We will all face Judgment. Judgment. I have to ask the question, how many judgments are there? Well, there's two. There's two judgments. I'm going to show you in the Bible. Peter says it this way in 1 Peter 1.17. And remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. I got to argue with him about that. I'm his favorite. Y'all, come on. Lighten up on me. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him, doing your time here as temporary residence. Ah, ah, this is just a just passing through in this big scheme of eternity. I was talking to Jonathan's dad yesterday. He just turned 86 years old and getting around good as I am and, and all that. And you stop and you think, well, wow, 86 years. Wow. And then you hear people living to be 100 and then 110 and, and 120. And you think, wow, can I tell you something? It don't matter how many years you live on this earth. It's just a vapor. It passes quickly. Ask anybody that's over the age of 40. Life goes quick. It's fast. And Paul, I mean, Peter was saying, watch, we're all going to be judged by the good or the evil, but live in reverent fear of God. Here's the difference between relationship and religion. Let me, let, me, let me break it down. Here's the difference between religion and relationship. The word reverent fear here is not fearing that he's sitting on heaven's throne with a baseball bat wanting to beat his children up. If that's the case, the Bible's a lie. Y'all need to help me. God is not sitting on the throne of heaven wanting to beat his children up. Reverent fear is to understand I want to please him. I can't earn it. I don't deserve it. There's nothing I can do to, to put myself in heaven. I had to be washed in the blood of Jesus, receive him as my Lord and my Savior, See, when we get this right here straight in our, in our minds, we'll live a different life for Christ. I, didn't, I can't earn it. I can't deserve it. But I want to serve him with my life that gives me a desire to be pleasing to him. Is anybody with me today? You're tracking. Understanding I'm not going to be here long. I'm just passing through. Ooh, didn't want to get on the other side. Here's the other false thing that we do. Oh, that must just going to be a old, long, drawn out praise and worship service. Y'all already worship too long here for me. 
All we're going to do is sit over there. You're going to get tired after a while, Pastor. I'm going to let that settle for a minute because I, I think we need to understand how important it is of our worship. Our, our worship is more important than we have ever thought it could ever be. I've seen people healed during worship. I've seen people saved through worship. I've seen people's lives transformed through worship. Why is our worship so important? We want to please him. He says, where any two come together. In my name, there I'm in their presence. I don't know about you, but in the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. There's freedom. There's healing. There's deliverance. And let me tell you something. Y'all think it's just going to be real quiet in heaven? You're going to walk down this, 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 this hallway. They're worshiping in there. They're taking on communion in there. Even sacrifice in there. Shh, shh, hold on, be quiet. I'm taking you to your room. No, baby, it's gonna be one loud, continuous worship to a holy God that is worthy. That's why He's giving you a new body, because the one you got can't withstand. He have to burn it up and consume it. Why would he have to consume it? Because in nature, we are sinners saved by grace. Our natural sense, we were born into sin. Our sin nature because of the fall at the garden, that didn't change when Jesus died. He died and was born again, Say, went to heaven to intercede for each one of us. Why? Because. So we can choose. He's not a dictator. Come on. Somebody say, we'll face judgment. There's two judgments. Number one, the Bible says there's a great white throne judgment. Okay? Most scholars believe that the Great white throne judgment is for the non-believers. And I have to say, I agree with them. Watch what it says here. And in, in when John had a vision in Revelations, if you turn there with me, Revelations 11, he had a, a vision, by the visitation by the Holy Spirit that gave him a vision of what was to come. And this is what he said in verse and I saw a great white throne, Levin, and the one sitting on it, the earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were open. Then he didn't stop there. He says, including the book of life. And anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. I wish I had time for that. Let's just say the pits of hell. Everybody said. See, when we receive Christ, so that would be your non-believers because when we receive Christ, our name was written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, here we go. We're going to, I'm going to have some arguments on this, so y'all y'all help me. Don't, don't argue with me. Just read the Bible. Where he said that your name cannot be removed, blotted out. That your name will be written when you confess Jesus as Lord. Come on. So when we receive Christ, so, so now he's talking about the second judgment. And the second judgment is for Christ's followers, believers. Paul was writing to the church 
And uh, Jesus says this first in Matthew 7. I got so many scriptures here because this was my study notes. Verse 21. And I don't know about you, but I struggle with this one. And still today, I still, to some degree, I struggle with this. This is not one that's pleasant to hear. But how many of you know that everything in the Bible is not pleasant to our natural body? Our natural mind, our carnal mind, we fight the things of the Spirit. But Jesus himself said this in Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Ouch. Not everyone that calls out on me, that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Watch this. What did he say? On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. But wait a minute, God. I, was, I went to church every Easter. I've been a nice guy. Come on. Help me. I, I mean, I've done a lot of good things. I even gave that guy ringing the bell outside of the store on Christmas some money. He's going to say, no, your name ain't written in Lamb's Book of Life. I didn't know you. I've never had a relationship with you. There's never been no intimacy with you. There, there's always, but, but, but wait a minute. God, I went to Life Spring Church. He goes, I don't care. I knew Pastor Mark. He's going to say, who? Y'all, come on. I mean, I've done good things. I, I, man, I donated. I, I mean, I, I did a lot of good things. I, I fed that guy standing out on the, on the off ramp and, and gave him some money. Depart from me, for I never knew you. I, I mean, good night, God. I donated clothes to, to Goodwill. Depart from me. For I never knew you. I paid somebody's rent. Fed them. He's going to say, depart from me. For I never knew you. So see, that's the judgment of being a Christ follower. Not ready. I'm going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Second Corinthians, Paul says in Chapter 5, verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment. Who, who, who's going to appear? Who? How many people going to? All. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. He's talking to you. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us. Uh-oh. For the things that we have done while in the body, oh, whether good or bad, no matter how much we gave that little guy with the bell money, how many folks we fed, or how many people we shot, we're all going to sit before the judgment seat of Christ. See, this is a Greek term. It's called bima. In the Greek Olympics, in the Greek Olympics, they didn't bring who qualified and who didn't qualify before the judges. They brought, they brought the ones that finished the race So he's talking to believers here, not just non-believers. 
He would, they would bring the, the ones, and then, then they would choose. This one's first place, second place, third place, and so on. They, those that were sitting in the stands didn't get brought before the Bema seat. Amen? So now he's talking to believers that we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Y'all with me? Y'all keep tracking with me. Can I tell you something? I want to be clear here. When we stand before God there, we will not be judged for our sin. Because the price had already been paid. So what he's talking about here now is our works. Whoop! Stop a minute, Pastor. I'm confused. You say we're saved by grace, but now you're saying that we get rewarded for our works? Exactly what I just said. We can't work for our salvation. It was already laid out for us. It's laid out for you. Those that have never received it, it's laid out for you. It's free. It's called grace. But we all will stand before him and be rewarded for our works. We'll be judged on some things. We're going to be judged on how we treat people. Y'all with me? So, so let, me, let, me, let me go on and get off in, this, in everybody's little business today. So when we're causing drama for everybody, we gossiping about everybody. Oh, because we're going to be accountable for every idle word that we speak. <gasps> we don't like to talk about this in church. It gets quiet. I'm glad y'all real quiet. Listen. We're going to be judged. By the things we say, the actions that we do to others. We're, we're, we're going to be judged by what we did with our resources in life. Come on. Did we just hoard it up for ourselves? That's not what the Bible tells us. We're going to be also judged on. How we endure suffering. We're going to be judged on how we led people to Christ. You see, everybody thinks it's the pastor's job to go out and lead people to Christ. That is not so. That's not so. I led more people to the Lord before I became a pastor, and I have since I've been a pastor, I think, for the most part. We're going to be accountable before God. We're going to throw it. So we, we want to ignore these things. We want to ignore these things. You know that part in the Bible that says, honor your mother and your father? And in that, you will have satisfied with long life. You'll be judged on that, how you treated your parents. Parents, I believe that you're going to be judged the way you treat your children. Come on. Can I be real with you today? Can I be real transparent? And understanding that we're all, everybody, the worst of the worst in this world today. We all will stand before a holy God that is fair in judging. He has no favorites. He can only judge by his word. And he's fair about his word. Every predator will stand before God. Every saint will stand before God. Every murderer will stand before God. Every one of us will stand before God. Somebody say everyone. I don't know about you, 
cannot imagine how humbling, how sobering the thought is knowing that there's coming a day that we're going to stand before God. I don't know if we're going to stand before him or are we going to have to kneel because we can't stand. And he's going to judge it. He's going to put a crown on our heads. For every stone that we receive, for every soul we save into the kingdom, this is what's going to matter. For every child that we impart life into, some people think just teaching Sunday school is, oh, it's just a duty. It's a job. No, you are imparting into a life that's changing their life. There's so many. I watched and said yesterday evening and looking at the ones that, that's come through the church. Now it's grown. Now they grown. Now we got another generation. I've done seen two or three generations come through now. How much <laughs> have we imparted in them? We're going to have to stand before God, all of us. One reason I never wanted to take this calling that God gave me was because I know I'm going to stand before God in a different line than you. My Bible says that I will be held accountable for what I teach across this pulpit, how I treat you. How I love you. Some people, they go talk all that smack behind my back. I don't care. Let me explain something to you. I am who I am, and I love you enough to tell you the truth even if it hurts. Come on. Some people don't like the truth. Tell them, Pastor. I'll be preaching horrible. And you hear some people, tell them, Pastor. Tell them, I'm preaching to you. Come on now. We're going to stand before a holy God for what we've done with the children that we're entrusted to. Jesus is going to say, I know I've heard your prayers, and you prayed, and you've prayed, and you were the brightest light in your office. Even when everybody else was making fun of you, well done, my good and my faithful servant. I know Jesus is going to say, I know you didn't have much, but you gave all you could give. Even when it was to help somebody else, you gave and sacrificed. Well done, my good and my faithful servant. You did what was right when even when nobody else was looking. Good and faithful servants. I don't know about you, I want to hear Jesus say to me, you gave me food when I was hungry, water when I was thirsty, you clothed me when I was naked, you, pre, you, you visited me when I was in prison. Uh, the least of these you have done unto others. Imagine standing before Jesus. We should not take that lightly. We should not take this as just another sermon message. I hope it's an eye-opening, awakening moment for each and every one of us. Because I'm going to be raw with you right now. I fail in some of these areas myself. That I've got to do better in. Why? And I prayed and I asked God, why am I failing in these areas? And I believe it's a word for all of us in due season. Because your roots are too deep into this world. You're too consumed with what the world. Listen, the more comfortable we get, the more comfort we seek. And can I tell you something? This is temporal. We're passing through. We're passing through. What legacy do we leave for the next generation when we water down and give a feel-good message? 
personally, I have not been doing well. There used to be a time you didn't get around me five minutes without knowing who Jesus is and how I believe. I don't care if you didn't like me. It didn't matter if you talked about me. I've had people say I'm nuts. I've lost my mind. I have. I've lost my mind, and I'm trying to take on the mind of Christ. It don't matter because at the end of the day, when you stand before God, I want to hear for you, well done, my good and my faithful servant. And when I'm standing in line, I don't want to look over there and go, I missed it. I had a chance, but I didn't. Y'all with me? The Bible says then we're going to take that crown off. And we're going to lay it at his feet. Not I, but you that live in me. I'm like Paul. To be absent from this body is gain. I'm ready to go. But I ain't ready to go. I'm ready to go, but there's too much work to do before I go. I don't know about you, but I want to hear, well done. My good. And my faithful servant. And the church said. If we believe the Bible. He says that we're going to be held accountable. For every word spoken. And I'm going to speak for me. That scares the hell out of me. How many in here right now. If you had to stand accountable. And everything you said was recorded, and everybody gets to hear it. That wouldn't be good, would it? So we ought to live a life, not of works, understanding that we'll never receive our our salvation through works. We're rewarded for the deeds done. Reward for the deeds done on earth in this mortal body while we're living. If you'll stand to your feet this morning, I I, I personally want to repent to God for not being the light I should be. Pastor, that's kind of bold for a pastor to stand up and say that. That's the facts. I didn't walk on water to get here this morning. And I'm not going to walk on water to leave here today. And everybody said... Our job is... Before we hear, before this body dies, is to lead as many to Christ as we possibly can. That's our job. That's our job. It starts with duct tape over our mouth. I said it starts with duct tape over our mouth. How many in this place would be honest today that says, whatever comes to your mind comes out your mouth? Do you know that is, that's not an excuse. As much as we'd like for it to be. I can't help it, Pastor. If it comes up, it comes out. The Bible says, take every thought captive that exhausts itself against the knowledge of Christ. You cannot perform a word without a thought process first. I personally want to thank God for the work that He's doing in all of our lives. But I also think where we are today with everything going on in the world, because it's crazy. Our job is to take as many with us as when we go. How many would it say in here with me this morning, Pastor? I, 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 I want God to use me more. I want to repent for not being willing vessels to let my light shine. Even when everybody else thinks I've lost my mind. If that's you, keep your hand up this morning. Father, you see every hand. Those that are here, those that are watching around the world today. You see the hands. We repent, God. We ask that you forgive us for our shortcomings. Now, Holy Spirit, 
we ask that you gird us up. Give us strength. Give us knowledge. Let us be a light in a dying and dark, desolate world that is in need of a Savior. Father, we know that we will stand before you in judgment. And Father, we humble ourselves today. And we ask for your strength. And we'll give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. If that's you and you receive it for yourself today, give the Lord a hand clap of praise.